In this chapter of the book, we now switch topics in chapter 7 and start considering a very important thing called linear momentum. Linear momentum is an extremely useful concept, especially in things in which forces change dramatically, for instance, in collisions and explosions. The definition of linear momentum is that it is a vector defined by the mass of the particle or object and the velocity of the object. So this is an example again of multiplication of a vector by a scalar. If the vector velocity is in this direction, then the linear momentum vector will be pointing in the same direction. It may be longer or it may be shorter depending on whether m is greater than 1 or less than 1, but we know that m is a positive quantity, so these two vectors will point in the same direction. So it's very related to velocity. What it's saying is that whereas if something's going 10 miles per hour and it's a bus, then that bus has a greater desire, if you will, to continue moving in a straight line at constant speed than if it's a 10 mile per hour uh, paper airplane. So the momentum, how much momentum you have, depends on your velocity, how fast you're going, but it also depends on your mass and it depends on equal footing with those two things. Now, you often hear, oh, they got the momentum or such. Well, when they use that, well, it has kind of the spirit of what physics is talking. It's not really the way physicists are using the term. We mean mass times velocity, and it is a vector, and it has to be broken into components. Now, the easiest type of questions they can give you is something that's just purely a calculation thing. All right, so, uh, they give you some problem here that says a two kilogram ball is traveling five meters per second at this angle of 30 degrees and because it is a vector we need some coordinate systems in case we have to break that vector into components as shown below what is the ball's linear momentum in polar form well multiplication of a vector by scalar is easy in polar form if you forgot that go back to the module on vectors p is equal to 2.00 kilograms, that's the scalar, and the vector here is 5 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. Multiply those together you get 10.0 kilogram meter per second at an angle of 30 degrees. So all it did was double the length of the vector. Now this unit, kilogram meters per second, that's a unit of a linear momentum. However, it also has another. It's also written as Newton per second. And that's because a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So if you multiply a Newton by a second, you kill the second squared and you get a kilogram meter per sec. Which one's better? They're both equal. This one implies the connection back to the fundamental definition of mass times velocity. Mass, velocity, kilogram, meter per sec. This other one implies something very important in a minute, and that is a connection between linear momentum, force, and time. In particular, a change in linear momentum is connected to force and time. Now, what if the vector is asked to be find the linear momentum in Cartesian form. Well, you got a couple of ways. You could break the velocity vector first in Cartesian and then multiply by the scalar. Or if you already have the linear momentum in polar form, you can just break that vector into Cartesian form. And since that's what I have, that's what I'll do. So this is going to be 10 kilogram meter per second. And then I'm going to multiply that. I'm looking for this side of the triangle. That's the x side. That's the adjacent. So I need the cosine of 30 degrees. That'll give me the x part. And then 10 kilogram meter per second. And now I'm looking for this side over here. And that side's the opposite side. So I need the sine function sine 30 degrees j hat. 
Okay. So my linear momentum is approximately. Well, I had to take my calculator and set and punch this thing. So let's do that. Uh, cosine of 30 degrees is about 0.86 and multiply that by 10 is 8.66 kilogram meter per second I had plus 5 kilogram meter per second J hat. So that's the answer for this part of the problem when you've been given the vector in this form. Okay, let's look at another problem. Um, instead of just having one vector, sometimes you have a problem involving something bouncing off another object. Now, the reason that this type of problem is important is that it comes back to us in optics later on where we consider very special balls bouncing off things. The balls are called photons and the things that they usually bounce off are called mirrors. So we'll use the uh, results that we get here when we get to that problem. Uh, we'll have uh, an example where they bounce off with like I said a mirror but we'll also have the case where they stick which are absorbers and we'll look at how light can supply both energy and linear momentum to a particular mirror. Uh, getting back to our case in this case just like think of it as a pool ball or a baseball. I used to like throw baseball against the ball and bounce it off to catch the ball to practice. This ball is going in. I'm going to get a coordinate system since I know linear momentum is a vector. I need to have my coordinate system. And it says what is the change in the linear momentum? Well this is just two of the problems we just got through doing. The initial linear momentum is 2.0 kilogram ball and its velocity is 5 meters per second in the positive x direction. So 5 meters per second I had. That means it's 10 kilogram meter per second I had. Its final momentum is this arrow as it bounces back this away going the other direction and it's 2 kilograms in this case, it's 5 meters per second. It has the same speed, but not the same velocity. Its velocity is going in the negative x, so it's minus 5 meters per second I hat. That makes it minus 10 kilogram meters per second I hat. Change in linear momentum is equal to the final minus the initial. That's minus 10 kilogram meters per second I hat minus a 10 kilogram meter per second I hat. So the change in linear momentum is minus 20 kilogram meters per second I hat. For those of us who played athletics, it's actually something that we learn about this. The change in momentum is greatest, not when, for instance, a running back runs in and gets tackled but in problems in which the running back comes in, hits, and bounces backwards. The momentum is much greater. The change is twice as great in these things where you bounce off. Um, if we go and now ask ourselves what caused that change in linear momentum, well the ball would have gone this way forever, but something happened here which changed it. And what happened was this wall applied a force upon that ball. So the answer to the question is what changed linear momentum? A force in the negative x direction applied to the wall, I'm sorry, to the ball by the wall. Of course by the third law we know that if the wall applied a force in the negative x direction to the ball then the ball had to apply a force to the wall in the positive x direction. But well, our interest here is the change in linear momentum of the ball and that was due to the force that the wall applied. Notice that the force applied the 
in the negative x direction is in the same direction as the direction of the change in linear momentum. These are connected. This is what it's causing, linear momentum change. 